Hello, I'm Phil Kitchen, an Accounts Director here at Brown Butler, Chartered Accountants in Leeds. And I'm here today to talk to you about e-commerce and selling online. In the last year, there's been a huge surge in online sellers and marketplaces as businesses attempt to deal with the restrictions placed on everyday life by the global pandemic. In fact, within the first four months of the original lockdown, more than 85,000 businesses launched online stores or joined existing online marketplaces. And since then, more and more businesses have sprung up as both new entrepreneurs enter the market and established businesses build successful e-commerce offerings. According to market research, the UK is now the third largest e-commerce market in the world. However, this surge in online selling is not just a product of the pandemic. Over the last few years, more and more people have been shunning the high street and retail parks in favour of buying online. After all, there is a reason why the likes of Amazon and eBay are now the world's largest retailers. And the events of the last 18 months have changed both consumer and business spending behaviour considerably. There are many benefits to operating an e-commerce business, for example, lower operating costs compared to a traditional retail business. And it could also be easier to scale up and grow. There are, however, a number of things that both new and established businesses need to consider and understand when setting up shop online. Based on our considerable experience in this area, we are launching a series of short videos that will go over some of the key steps and considerations, which include setting up an e-commerce business, bookkeeping and accounting for e-commerce, pricing models, VAT, and selling to customers overseas. If you'd like to learn more on how we can help you with selling online, then don't hesitate to speak to us today. Setting up a new business can be an exciting prospect, but it is not without challenge. And there are certain steps that anybody needs to consider when setting up a new enterprise. This might include which structure to use, business banking, insurance requirements, company's house reporting requirements, and any careful tax planning. We have helped a number of clients to some new online businesses and help them navigate the complexities and opportunities that they face in launching their new venture. We've also helped existing clients diversify into the world of e-commerce, either through their current company or by setting up a new subsidiary. When setting up a new business, we must consider the right structure to use. And this can include registering as being self-employed or a sole trader, a partnership, or registering a new company. Limited company structure brings many advantages, both from a tax and personal liability point of view. However, it does come with important obligations and responsibilities. Limited company must be registered with Companies House, and you need to provide details of the registered office and the company's offices, and these are held on the public record. This includes naming people who have significant control of the business, and the company must appoint at least one director as part of the incorporation process. If you do not operate from commercial premises, and you do not wish to use your home address as the, as the registered office, you can use your accountant's address for a small annual fee. However, this cannot be used as the trading address. If you don't want to establish a limited company straight away, we can assist to register you for self-employment or indeed a partnership. And as the business grows, we can help advise and alter the business structure as required. A company is required to have its own bank account, but the bank will need a copy of the certificate of incorporation to set this up. You may also consider using a savings account in order to help reserve funds for future tax liabilities. When setting up a business, you also need to consider insurance. And there are three main types of insurance, employer's liability, public liability, and product insurance or professional indemnity insurance depending on whether you are selling a product or a service. However, in light of recent events, you could also invest in business interruption insurance, which could pay out in the event of a pandemic or similar events. 
At some point in time, you may need to recruit staff or indeed pay yourself salary. In which case, you'll need to register as an employer for pay as you earn with HMRC. Once this is set up, you need to calculate and deduct any tax and national insurance every time a payment is made to a member of staff or employee. And this is payable to HMRC on a monthly or quarterly basis. You are also required to submit this information to HMRC under the real-time information legislation. You must also consider how much to pay yourself, and this very much depends on your personal circumstances. In some cases, it's beneficial to pay a small salary and dividends, which helps reduce the amount of income tax you may be liable for. You also need to consider the provision of pensions for staff. Under the complex auto-enrolment auto rules, all employers have to provide their qualifying workers a pension scheme. And this includes all staff aged between 22 and state pension age who earn at least £10,000 per annum and work within the UK. And lastly, it's recommended that you have formal contracts of employment for all your staff. And this sets out the standard terms and conditions of their employment, including any salaries and benefits that they may receive. If you operate through a limited company, there's a strict filing regime you must abide by. Every limited company in the UK is required to file accounts with the registrar. Accounts are usually made up to the business's year end. And this is usually based on the month in which it was incorporated. It is possible to change the company's year end, but an accounting period must not exceed 18 months. There are also restrictions on extending the year end more than once in five years. The annual accounts must comply with the Companies Act. This includes based on the format of them and also the notes to the accounts. Smaller businesses can file affiliated accounts or micro company accounts if certain conditions are met. And this means that they do not need to file a profit and loss account on the public record. The accounts must be filed with Companies House within nine months of the year end. And there is a strict penalty regime for late submission. In addition, every year, a company must file a confirmation statement. This form basically confirms the registered office, the officers of the company, the shareholders, and any persons with significant control. If you use our office for your registered office, we can take care of this for you. A limited company must pay tax on the profits it generates, and this is called corporation tax. Corporation tax is calculated based on net profits after allowable expenses and any capital allowances that may be available. The current rate of corporation tax in the UK is 19%. There are a variety of reliefs that can be claimed to reduce this liability. Corporation tax is always calculated on an accounting period to a maximum of 12 months. In the event that your accounting period is more than 12 months, there will be two tax returns and two payments required. As a general rule, corporation tax is paid nine months and one day after the accounting period ends. Once you've registered your company with Companies House, HMRC should be informed. However, they may ask you to complete Form CT41G. And this confirms company details and provides information with regards to the company's unique tax reference or UTR. We've helped hundreds of businesses set themselves up, including many e-commerce enterprises. To find out how we can help, don't hesitate to contact us today. <laughs>